In this wedding, I'm going to be using a combination of techniques to really go fast. Um, this is how I would normally edit any wedding that I would deliver. And you're going to see me use a combination of adding presets, um, perspective control, so that's like straightening out the photo, um, and then also using brushes to do dodging and burning. So I'm, I've already started. I'm kind of just cruising along here, going from image to image. And you'll see me just pick an image, adjust it like I just did that one you know, add a preset, adjust temperature as needed, uh, tint as well. I mean, you really shouldn't have to do that much to get a really, really good look with the presets. And on that, on that one, I actually just added all hard because I wanted just a little pop of contrast. So then I just selected all of the rest of um, the similar images in that set that were shot kind of in the same time and same lighting. And once I get one image right, I'll just sync it with all the rest. And this saves a lot of time when you go to edit the other photos. And you'll see me do this over and over throughout this entire video. So now I'm just kind of going through, um, tapping through each, video, or each uh, image, uh, straightening as needed, and doing s uh, small uh, exposure adjustments as needed. And as you can see, I'm not spending any more than just a few seconds on each image. So the real key to editing in the style that I edit is starting with, with a really good base. So for me, that's the presets that I created. And then using the batch function where you're you know, getting one image right and then applying that to all the images around it that are similar. So this image here just was really underexposed, so I needed to bring that one up. I also applied all hard, or I mean all soft, to um, bring back the highlights and the flowers. This next image was almost identical to the last, so all I had to do really was just hit, you know, previous, um, and then apply highlight soft. And as you can see, again, just small adjustments. I'm I'm kind of staying within the very basic. Uh, you know, set of tools that you need to use Mass and Labs well. Um, and that should really only, you know, have you be working within um, the tone profiles. So that's like all hard, all soft, etc., And uh, temperature, tint, and exposure. Some images like this where there's square shapes, I'll go into the upright section under transform. And I'll go through like the different settings, you know, off, auto, guided, level, vertical, etc. And usually auto is good enough to get an image straight. But you'll see later in this video that I'm gonna use um, the guided tool, which is incredible. I mean, you can straighten anything with it. So again, I used all soft, just to bring back a lot of that, that detail. And all soft with Fuji 400H looks really, really film-like, it looks amazing. I'm going to apply it to this photo as well because it was very similar. And to this photo as well. You're seeing that red in the photo there briefly because I had pressed the J key on the keyboard and that shows you your highlight clipping and shadow clipping. And that's really important if you're doing the J trick, which we'll get to later in the video. So since all of these were shot outside, it's not hard to just kind of, you know, fix one and apply it to the next. Um, this is a tough image because the writing on that picture is really, really hard to see. So you can see me straightening the image using all soft to kind of bring back as much detail as possible. Now I'm doing some really uh, kind of crappy uh, dodging and burning here just real quickly to see if what's even available to find in that image, if there's even any detail. And instead of doing just a straight burn, uh, using neg negative exposure, I'm, I'm trying different things like contrast, clarity, uh, dehaze, and just seeing what combination works. So I'm going back to that brush that I had applied before, and now I'm holding down the Option key and erasing a little bit of it. So if you hold down the Option key, you actually can remove the dodging or burning that you just applied. These images need minimal tweaking, um, you know, just exposure adjustments, a little bit of temperature. 
again, I'm trying to dodge or burn those signs because they're, you know, kind of washed out. It's just the nature of, um, of shooting text on paper. It can be really difficult, but with just a little bit of work with the brushes, you can always bring it back. Uh, this image, I'm, you know, bringing up the exposure, doing all soft. See how it brings back all the detail everywhere. Uh, this image is going to need it too. There you go. And bringing down the exposure just a tiny bit. I am meticulous with how I crop and rotate my images. That's really, really critical. I don't like things uh, crooked at all. So in this image, I'm doing the J trick. So I open the tone curve and pull the bottom point down until I see a little bit of black appear. And that image just needed it. It, it needed a little uh, deeper black point. Uh, black and white, pretty simple. Just exposure adjustments and using the Ilford preset pack from Mastin Labs. We have some really, really nice um, film emulations in there. And my personal favorite is Pan F, but you'll see me use Pan F HP5 and Delta 3200, depending on the image. So some light dodging and burning. Pan F here on this image, I thought it would look really nice. Increase the exposure a bit, and you get some really nice deep blacks and bright whites. Playing with the cropping here a little bit, I, I don't like all that negative space above her. Getting ready in a home gym <laughs> room. But this is Delta 3200. You see all that grain? Uh, I think Delta 3200 is beautiful because of that grain. And it also has kind of glowing highlights. You'll see me use it throughout this set. Okay, here's where I use the guided tool because auto is just not cutting it. So with guided, it's a new feature by Adobe. You just draw a few lines around something that you know to be square and Lightroom will do its magic and make the entire image correct. I think it's one of the most powerful tools in Lightroom and probably the most underused, but very, very simple. So again, I'm just applying the preset, doing some basic exposure adjustment. I did lens correction on, because I shot this at f1.4. When you shoot your lens wide open, you get a lot of vignetting. Uh, this image needs all, kind of, all kinds of work. I'm gonna start with HP5. I'm going to try to fix the uh, skew here. So auto seemed to do a pretty good job. I hate that fire detector in the ceiling. So I'm just going to grab the uh, cloning tool here and just tap on it once and get rid of that thing and done. Uh, this image, yeah, I don't know, nice light. I wish she wasn't holding the Starbucks container, but whatever. This is a real wedding with very nice people. And yeah, just real simple adjustments. Apply the preset, 400H neutral, increase the exposure, slight temperature and tint adjustment until you see that the skin tones look good. That's it. This one I do Delta 3200 on, I believe. Yeah. It works really well with images that don't have a lot of detail in them. Um, it really lets the grain show. And you'll see me just keep applying the preset and doing these small adjustments. Uh, one thing that I strive for with Mastin Labs was to get an accurate film emulation in any kind of light. So if you're shooting Fuji 400H inside in this light, or later you'll see outside, you should get an exact match. The real trick was being able to get that exact match without having to have the user do a ton of tweaks. So you'll see that I'm mostly just applying the preset and getting where I want to with just exposure, temperature, and tint, and occasionally a tone profile. Spending a little extra time on this detail just to get it right. So here's some Pan F, nice and beautiful, deep, dark and rich black and white film and preset. And since it's working, you know, in this lighting condition and I wanted to deliver a mix of black and white and color, 
I'm just kind of going by instinct here and applying, you know, Pan F or Delta 3200 or whatever uh, every once in a while to kind of break up the getting ready images. On this image, we've got some areas that are really blown out. So I'm just gonna apply Pan F, decrease the exposure and then go into my brushes here. All hard all also kind of gives it a little more contrast. So with a brush, I'm just going to knock down the exposure a little bit with a negative exposure brush, a little burning, and I'm gonna be just really gentle in how I do it. You wanna kinda of do it in stages. So I often will just do a little bit of um, burning and then do a new brush and do a little more burning, etc. You can always back it off later if you overdo it with the sliders, but I'm just trying to draw attention to his face instead of like the guy in the white shirt in the background. There's another image that looks way better in black and white. Again, I'm gonna do um, Highlight Soft to bring in as much highlight detail as I can. And this image is also gonna need a, uh, a little bit of burning. So just drop the exposure, you know, almost you know, like 0.6, and then go in with a brush and just kind of softly brush around in the uh, super light areas because I'm trying to draw attention to the guy in the middle. Again, you shouldn't spend more than, I don't know, in my opinion, shouldn't spend any more than five or six seconds on any image once you kind of get the workflow down. A lot of these images can be adjusted in like three seconds. Um, just, you know, apply the preset, increase the exposure, and maybe a little white balance change. Images that I spend more than that amount of time on are images like this where I've got to do a little bit of extra work. So, you know, in this case, I'm, I'm burning some of the bright spots down. Uh, and in other images you saw, I was correcting perspective um, to make things look straight. But the reality is, is if you're a working photographer and you're delivering a lot of weddings every year, I was delivering up to 40 or 50 a year at my peak, um, you just can't spend a lot of time editing. I mean, you, you have to deliver a really good product, that's critical, but I mean, You've got to get your workflow down. You've got to be fast and efficient because you will burn out if you don't learn how to edit fast. You know, it's either that or outsourcing to someone else uh, so that you can keep your energy levels up to get through the whole season. But, but really, like, I don't know, not to toot my own horn again, but the presets that we developed really, really make it easy to uh, quickly get through a wedding. We give you just the, exactly the amount of tools you need. So like in this image, Fuji 400H, um, a tone profile, a little bit of temperature tint adjustment till it looks just right, and that's it. Any image that's got a little bit of blur in it, like this one, a little trick I learned is that images that are a little bit blurry or out of focus, they look really good in black and white. Just, okay, so this image, she's quite a bit overexposed, but with Fuji 400H and all soft, we're bringing back as much detail as possible. We're gonna drop the exposure just a tiny bit. Beautiful light in this room. It's like sandwich lighting, I call it, when you've got light coming from both sides at the same time. It's my favorite light to shoot in for getting ready. Um, I'm doing a slight J trick adjustment in the tone curve just to bring back some contrast. So some, sometimes images like this where you've got a lot of flare from the window, um, you might have to go in the tone curve and just kind of pull the corners in. You'll see me do it again and again in the video. If for any reason you don't understand, we also have a video just about the J trick that you can find uh, by going to the Mass and Labs community on Facebook and joining. We've got a nice list of videos on the side. Okay, this image, I'm trying to desperately make it straight. Um, none of the tools work, so I have to go to Guided. So again, I'm drawing lines around this mirror to create the correct perspective. And it's pretty much a miracle tool. I'm gonna hit Constraint Crop to get rid of all that white space. And now I'm gonna start my edit. So 400H, all soft, bring back that detail in the highlights warm it up a little bit, 
and move on to the next one. So, you know, again, I'm gonna see if auto works. Nope, doesn't work. I'm gonna try guided. So I'm gonna draw along the side of this mirror. And before this guided tool, I mean, this would have taken ages, I mean, to fix, but it's just amazing what it can do. The perspective's a little bit weird along the bottom. This mirror was actually not standing up straight like this, but it just looks a little better. So I'm gonna pull in the bottom so that you don't know that, so the viewer doesn't see that. Simple. And then I'm gonna do my edit, Fuji 400H, uh, increase the warmth a little bit, drop the exposure, and highlight soft just to bring back some detail in the dress. Okay, so it's time for a black and white. I haven't done one for a while. I'm gonna crop out a little bit of that extra space above. I normally shoot film for a lot of my work, so I'm used to shooting uh, like in a 6-4-5 ratio. And I just can't stand uh, 35 millimeter verticals. They just seem too tall. So often I'll try to crop out that negative space above. That, that time I didn't actually make it a 6-4-5 crop, but I still wanted to get rid of some of that negative space. So now I'm just kind of, you know, finishing up some of the uh, getting ready, alternating between color and black and white. There's no real pattern here, it's just whatever I feel like. Uh, this image has got some really bright areas, so I'm gonna use Highlight Soft. And Highlight Soft is called Highlight Soft because on the Fuji Frontier scanner, uh, that's the professional film scanner that I own, it's from a lab actually, that I base all the presets on. They've got some settings on there called All Hard, All Soft, Highlight Hard, Highlight Soft, Shadow Hard, and Shadow Soft. Those are the direct translations from Japanese, and so I just preserved those names um, when I emulated them into Lightroom. And the purpose of All Soft and All Hard and all that is to control either the highlights or shadows, uh, just as you would when you're scanning film. So pre-Lightroom days, uh, you know, machine or scanner operators would have a few buttons they could push to kind of like fix highlights and shadows so you'll, you'll see me use those all throughout this video um, so right now I'm just doing a little bit of dodging and burning on her face um, she's kind of dark I I'm gonna just admit right now I'm, I'm not doing probably the very best job <laughs> on this one image I promise that the rest of the images are really good though and if she wanted a uh, like a huge like wall picture of that I would go back in and do some really careful dodging and burning so I'm doing the J trick here you see that the highlights and shadows are clipping I'm gonna bring in the tone curve at the bottom or I already did until I see blue this is a real tricky image it's super backlit there's a lot of reflection but I'm gonna do my best I'm trying all soft I'm adjusting temperature and tint uh, adjusting exposure I felt the midtones were a little bit dark and yeah, there you go, looks pretty good. This is also a super tricky image. So whenever you have like super harsh light coming around something super dark, you get chromatic aberration and it can get so bad that really you just should just make it black and white. Um, you could go in and try to fix that photo back there, but not worth it. All right, here's where my OCD takes over and I'm gonna try to straighten this building no matter what it takes. The image is also, I overexposed it a little bit too much in camera, but I'll fix that. And I've also got a real lack of contrast, so I'm gonna use the J trick here to pull in the uh, black point. This just comes from lens flare, from shooting into a bright situation, a bright house. Sometimes you get just a little bit of flare in your lens and it really kills the contrast. Processing photos, like after you shoot them, it, you're really just a problem solver. You're just going through, seeing what it, each image needs and fixing those problems. And the more images you edit and the more tools you know how to use, the faster you can go. And 
I don't know, I've been doing this for 20 years, so I go pretty fast, I guess, but you can go this fast too, I promise. Um, I used Fuji Blue on this one because the grass was in this like super bright, like noontime sun, and Fuji Blue kind of kills the uh, neon in the grass. So yeah, see, super neon. This is like no preset even applied yet. There it is with Fuji Blue. And really harsh light, and I'm using a combination of exposure and J-Trick to kind of tame everything. And I'm gonna also um, clone out a little bit of the junk on the grass, so some of those leaves. Yeah, little, little things you can do to kind of clean it up. I'm gonna burn her dress down a little bit because it's a little bit bright. And then you're gonna see me do this in a second here, a really uh, lame attempt at burning the uh, grass down. <laughs> yeah, I just back it off a little bit. It gets a little bit better. Um, I'm sure there's like a million people watching this right now going, man, your burning skills suck on this grass. Let me, let me tell you about this trick I know. And I believe you, you probably have better burning skills than I do. Um, but I'd say I'm a pretty good editor overall. Okay, here we go. Again, kind of not ideal lighting. We're gonna make it work. It's a beautiful house, it's cool. It's just classic, beautiful wedding. Uh, Eric and Amy had a just amazing wedding. This is a family house. They did it all at their own place, and it was amazing. So here I am in the upright section, desperately trying to make it look perfect without losing the, uh, Amy's feet. Um, I'm gonna just kinda keep you know, applying the previous setting to the next image because I had to do so much work on that first one. Applied uh, Fuji 400H Blue, increase the exposure, increase the temperature. And I'm adding just a little bit of magenta. There's a lot of ground reflection from the green grass. Added all soft and a little bit of J trick. So this image kind of got the, uh, the whole enchilada, but it's worth it. Okay, so on this image, we're just doing the same thing. Trying to get, you know, everything to look as good as possible and as quickly as possible, that's the key. Let's crop and straighten, fix uh, skin tones, bring in detail. Um, photographer's work is never done, <laughs> which is why I am trying to make the best tools I can for you um, so that you can enjoy your summer and not be stuck inside editing all summer long because that just really sucks. You should, you, you deserve to have fun. Okay, this is, I just was like, okay, Fuji 160 NS, it's a little super saturated actually, uh, Fuji film. And I'm just kind of trying it out on this image. Didn't really like it, but Moving on um, back to what I think is going to fit this wedding the best, which is Fuji 400H. So all these next images are um, shot in kind of similar light. Um, I overexposed a little too much by accident, but since they're raw files, it shouldn't be a big deal. I think you can see by the fact that I used a tilt shift lens <laughs> that this was this wedding was, I don't know, I think it was like five years ago. Um, and that's when tilt shift lenses were just like the new hotness and I rented one for this wedding. Um, I thought it looked really cool, really cool. But I think it just kind of became overdone at a certain point. So, you know, it just kind of left my camera bag. But for this wedding, I think it fits. It was really fun. And I didn't do it a lot. I think it's only just during this part of the wedding and a little bit of the um, wedding party photos. But yeah, they had a wonderful first look. Just perfect. Beautiful. Two of the, two of the nicest people I've ever met. So um, one thing about this tilt shift lens, 
that I really don't like, and I don't know if anyone out there has experienced this too, is that it loses a lot of contrast. Or it's just not a very contrasty lens, period. So when I was editing through this section, I kept just thinking to myself, like, gosh, these look flat. Um, some of them look pretty good. I mean, they, they don't look bad, but I just like to have a definite black point. And it, I only realized later that it was because of this lens. Um, the optics in a tilt shift lens are really complicated. Um, they're kind of a miracle in themselves. And one of the downsides of a tilt shift lens is you can get real loss of contrast. So these images in general will look a little bit flatter than the rest of the wedding. So I just used Highlight Soft to bring back the fields in the background. This is a extreme uh, lighting situation. It's like high noon, but we're under open shade. I'm kind of playing around with some black and white now. Um, just kind of mix it up. Pan F, this is the real dark black and white, real dark tones. But I think it looks just amazing. It's my favorite black and white film of all time. Just gonna keep cruising through here. We have one hour left of editing. I know that seems like an incredibly long time, um, but I'd say before I started using presets and before I started making my own and learning the tools, a wedding like this would have taken me probably two days to edit. And that's because I would do hand edits and go through every photo and overdo it. Um, it's very easy to do that. And I just learned over time that actually the best edits are, are quick and more global. And when I say global, I mean you're not going in with a brush and fixing everything and brushing colors in and out and all that stuff. For some reason, shooting film taught me that. that you know, to, to keep something looking natural, you don't want to do too many little adjustments. So I take the same approach in editing my wedding photography, and I had a lot of success with it and a lot of happy clients. Pan F, again, looks amazing. I think I do all of these in Pan F, these last ones. So the funny thing about Pan F is that it's a very, very, very slow film. It's a 50 ISO film. And that makes it really hard to shoot in a lot of conditions. You need a lot of light. So when I emulated Pan F for digital, um, I didn't realize how cool it would be to be able to use that same look at much higher ISOs. So you could shoot something at you know where you needed 1600 ISO and use Pan F and get the same look. And you would not be able to do that with the actual film. And that's kind of the beauty of uh, hybrid photography, is that you can shoot film because it's fun for yourself as an artist and because you learn a lot from shooting film and film is just easy. I mean, it just looks beautiful when you get it back. But you also, being a hybrid photographer, you can get that look with your digital as well. So you're kind of unstoppable, you can, you know, get the best work for your client in any condition and you know effortlessly uh, go between the two mediums and they each teach you something okay 400h applied lens correction on didn't really do much um, increase the exposure and temperature this is a super difficult image because it's so bright out I did highlight soft and so I'm just kind of working here to straighten it and bring the sky back I'm gonna do Fuji 400H blue, increase the temperature just a little bit. Highlight soft. There's not much sky detail there. Uh, Pan F, here we are with the tilt shift again. And I'm just gonna alternate through these next few photos between um, Pan F and Fuji 400H neutral. Some of these edits are super easy because I'm just hitting the previous button down in the corner and just applying the previous edit to the current photo. If you shoot on manual, which you should, you should always shoot on manual, once you get one photo dialed in 
and you're not changing your settings because you're not in in changing light you know if you're in the same light um, when you go to edit you're gonna save a ton of time because you can just fix one photo and then like I'm doing right here apply it to the next like 10 photos and you're done Fuji 400H Blue, tame those greens, uh, increase the temperature just a little bit, all soft, increase the exposure, little tiny bit of J trick there to bring in the black points, um, and a little more tint adjustment. Uh, bring down the exposure. These ones I had already, as you saw before, I had you know, done the previous button and, and applied a lot of the adjustments to. Um, but you'll see that I'm changing my mind on a few of them. Just seeing like, hmm, I wonder what 160 NS would look like on this. And as I said, 160 NS is very saturated, but it can look really cool. Going back to the uh, Fuji 400H Blue, just because uh, in these conditions, it just works better. The light is still not the best right here. So here I've got everybody kind of posed and arranged under this canopy. Um, a super bright background, as you'll see, and this causes um, some contrast issues, which I'm trying to fix with uh, the J trick. This is just, you know, a problem with uh, shooting into a bright light source like that. And you'll also notice that I'm using the 45 millimeter tilt shift lens, which I talked about earlier, which already has contrast issues. So you're going to get a slightly different look um, using that lens. So I'm, a, I'm a, you know, grabbing all, all of these images are shot in basically the same condition. I grabbed a bunch of them and hit sync settings. And that's working in the background while I just kind of go back to where I left off. So while I'm kind of looking through these photos, Lightroom is applying all those other changes to the other images. So then when I get to them, I've got a good starting point. So Fuji 400H neutral. Little, you know, tiny exposure adjustments, but really not much to do. I've already applied the, uh, the bulk of the editing in that, you know, apply all copy and paste mode. Now I'm going through the uh, bridal photos here and there's not too much to do with these. They were all shot kind of in the same you know environment as well. I might be really a weird person in saying this but I really enjoy bridal portraits and family portraits. It was a chance for me to really get to know each person at the wedding and it really helped to kind of set the tone where they felt like I was a friend that I was kind of one of them and it really it really just made the rest of the day just so much better because you didn't have that feeling of like oh am I bothering them or should I like hang back um, you just would feel like hey they're like really good friends um, so I say embrace embrace the family photos and the portraits um, it's a chance to get to know people also, just for practical reasons, these are the photos that people buy. So if you're interested in making money, this is what a lot of people want. You can't lose. Okay, we got this super bright background. Ah, uh, yes, you do the best you can with the time you have, but uh, I thought the photos turned out just fine anyway. But this was all kind of happening like in the noon hour in the middle of the summer. And if you think about it, everyone's standing on a bright green reflector straight underneath them. So keep that in mind too when you're editing that you're fighting against basically like if you just laid out a bright green cloth under your subject, you're going to have a little bit of reflection. So I tried to move them into the shade where we didn't have so much light bouncing straight down onto the green grass and then back up into their face. So we, you know, I'm trying to minimize it whenever I can. So 
So I just, you know, edited one photo, grabbed like, I don't know, 30 other photos, applied it, and then came back to where I left off so that when I get to those photos, they're already pretty much edited and I can just do a real quick check to make sure I don't need to, um, you know, decrease exposure or whatever, change a tiny thing. He is a marionette. <laughs> Eric's pulling his strings. Um, okay, getting through these family photos. I love doing those. A little bit of J trick here. I'm trying to bring back, um, you know, a better black point for these photos. And with this, with this wedding, I am showing you everything about how I shoot. So this is reality. Sometimes you, you'll see, you have just amazing shots and then you have shots that work just fine for where you are. Um, I thought all these turned out really great. If I would have slowed down just a little bit more, I could have, um, you know, found even softer lighting, but I think these turned out beautiful anyway. but you're literally seeing the photos that I delivered to Eric and Amy as a working wedding photographer. All right, getting through these, getting through these. Um, a little side story here. Uh, so in Norway, one of the most popular TV shows is of someone knitting. And you can like tune in and watch like someone like knit a sweater and it's really relaxing. And I keep thinking the same thing about this video is like you're watching me edit for an hour and 20 minutes. And if you're a wedding photographer, this is probably like really exciting, but maybe on the same level as like watching someone knit a sweater. So I hope you're enjoying it. I'll try to keep giving you advice um, as we get through this edit. Okay, a little bit of, I'm like, is there a little more black point I can get? Yeah, maybe I'm going into the tone curve there. I like to have really nice, uh, crisp black and white points. The uh, white point is definitely, definitely there in these photos because it is so bright out behind them. But the black point, if you bring that back in, you can really make a photo better. I love this, I love this moment. So many great moments in this wedding. Just the way that people interact with each other is fascinating. This image is a little overexposed. Um, you know, I can save it, but you'll see the hop fields in the background kind of get a little weird looking. But totally fine. You can't make every single picture you shoot perfect. That is not real. And all of the people that we admire in the industry, their secret is they never show a bad picture. But I guarantee you that they take them all the time. I, on the other hand, am not really trying to get wedding clients anymore, so I'm totally happy showing you everything I shoot. So some of these moments are not actually when, you know, I'm like, all right guys, look over here and we're gonna take a photo. Um, I'm getting those moments, but I love the moments in between those moments. So when they're trying to like wrangle people, get people together, um, that's when you can capture a lot of like real interaction, like human interaction that's really, really cool. Beautiful venue. So it's all put together by, um, Eric and Amy's families out in Oregon. Just wonderful, beautiful wedding. A lot of really cool details. Yeah, and just the perfect balance of everything. So here are some postcards. Again, I'm kind of going nuts with that tilt shift lens. 
Uh, it's very bright, so I used Highlight Soft, Fuji 400H on this, brought the exposure down, and applying it where I can. Um, These are just uh, images from kind of the, you know, the, or what do you call it, the reception line, the greeting line after the wedding when everyone wants to give you a hug. Um, I love that part. Here are some more details. Uh, again, super bright out. Um, I'm also trying to get details like this throughout the day where you can kind of see a little bit of, of the person, but also the details. So I could have just shot like the boutonniere like super close but I wanted to kind of back out because the wall behind Eric was really pretty the light was pure, pretty and uh, it just was a nice composition um, I, I'm editing this one both with Fuji 400H and Pan F because it looks so nice and then I got kind of the more like super close um, detail shot So now it's later in the day. You'll, you're going to start seeing the light change. We're getting closer to the actual wedding ceremony. And as you get light that is lower in the sky, so it's not like straight above, um, I think that the overall light quality improves until it's like dark out. And if you've ever struggled with your photography and wondered, okay, how do some people get like this really beautiful... Um, film look and then why can't I get it etc uh, a large part of it is just about what kind of light are you shooting in if you're trying to shoot a wedding like during noon like the noon hour it's gonna look pretty bad um, if you're shooting you know with the softer light like this it's gonna look amazing whether or not you use any presets or anything you're just shooting in good light and nothing can replace that Lots of knuckle bumps and high fives on the way up. Um, just do my basic edits through here. Apply the preset, a little exposure adjustment, temperature adjustment. I edit more on the light and airy side. So you'll see me, you know, at that time I brought the, the exposure down, but often I'll bring it up. That one I didn't have to do anything. This image is very backlit. I remember this was kind of a tricky one, so I made it black and white. And I don't often crop in so tight, but I couldn't get over any closer to them and make it back to my spot to get the rest of the photos. So I just shot from far away and then just cropped in. Not the best technique though. You should, you should always just zoom with your feet. Use a fixed lens and just be where you need to be by putting your body there. That's how you get good photos. Really, really great moments um, between Eric and Amy. This wedding, I mean, just everything about it was so wonderful that it was like shooting fish in a barrel. I, I almost couldn't turn any direction and not find like a great photo. Okay, this image is a little overexposed. Um, you're going to see me do a bit of work on this. So, black and white. I'm going to drop the exposure down, crop in, and then I'm going to get to work with the brush here. And I'm going to kind of dodge and burn in a circle around them because that's what I want people to focus on. So, the whole point of dodging and burning is to even out the lighting in a photo and to draw focus to what you want people to look at. Beautiful light. I mean, just check out this light. It's insane. Th this is, this is film, filmy light, I guess, or whatever. I guess it's like the ideal that people want. Um, but it's really just a function of the light itself. This is the light you want to shoot in for this look. And I'm just kind of copying and pasting my edits as I go. I 
think I just cropped out an Uncle Bob there. It's Fuji 400H Blue on this one just because the grass was kind of lit up. Um, some small adjustments done. This one's a little overexposed. I'm going to bring it down. Uh, thank God for raw files. There's so much information in them. And every time I'm, I mean, for wedding shooters out there, every time I am shooting a ceremony, I'm not shooting a ton of photos. I'm not shooting like a thousand photos. I am thinking, where should I be at exactly the right moment? Because, I mean, if you've seen a lot of weddings, you start to know where you should be. And so I'm always thinking, okay, I got to be at this distance so I can get some layers in there of people in front of them to make it more interesting. But I don't want to be so far away that, for example, I miss, like, the kiss at the end, right? When they're like, I now pronounce you man and wife or whatever. Um, so I'm thinking strategically throughout the entire day or the entire ceremony, where should I be to get exactly the shots I need and then move on to somewhere else? And it's a good way to think. You don't want to be a reactionary photographer where you're just reacting to the environment. You want to be in control. And that comes from really thinking about the event and, and predicting where things are going to be and when they're going to happen. And that just comes with time. Okay, I'm just copying and pasting my edits. Fuji 400H, a little exposure and temperature adjustments. Um, we're now at the prime part of the entire day for light. You'll see that the light is just completely amazing. And this part of the day doesn't last that long, maybe 45 minutes at tops. Ah, this is a tricky one, dappled lighting. You just do the best you can. Okay, this next image has got just a ton of flare. Um, but I thought it looked really cool, so I left it in the edit. So this is going to take a little work. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go to the tone curve and just bring it way, way, way in. I'm trying to find a black point somewhere. Um, and it gets kind of ridiculous how far I have to pull it in. But I do. I'm going to straighten it a little bit. Uh, all those rainbows and things you saw in that previous image, that just comes from that 45 tilt shift. I mean, it's... I don't use it anymore, um, it was kind of a one trick pony, but it can introduce a lot of weird flare and stuff like that. It's like an expensive lens baby, basically. <laughs> Still pretty cool for some things. Okay, I'm working my way through this. Beautiful light, beautiful light. I am now using a 20 millimeter lens, which I don't do that much anymore, um, just to kind of bring in the entire scene. Now I'm back to my 50. Or no, this is the uh, tilt shift. That's why there's no contrast. A little bit of a J trick there to bring that contrast back into that lens. Highlight soft on this image, it needs it. This image I'm bringing the exposure down, um, correcting the cropping a little bit. Okay, so we're back to that kind of crazy flare. I'm gonna have to bring the um, tone curve way, way, way in um, and, and kind of balance it against exposure. Since the 45, Tilt shift has so many kind of optical problems. You just kind of got to do your best to, um, you know, to edit around that. But I thought it looked really cool. I, it just kind of had a different vibe. And with a confetti like this, it looked really, really nice. 
I love movement in photos. There's not enough movement. My, my one biggest tip to people um, shooting weddings or family or whatever you shoot is anytime you can get movement in a photo, do it. It's just so much more interesting. So bringing in the black pen on the tone curve, I'm gonna do pan F on this one. It reset my tone curve, so I'm doing it again. Um, the tone curve is looking really extreme, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is that the photo looks really good. Back to Fuji 400H. And I'm gonna apply it to all the next photos. So all of these have 400 H on them and some basic adjustments. So post wedding, I am taking them out into this field to walk around and get some creative portraits of them. These are hop fields. I'm using the uh, graduated neutral density filter and dragging it in from the top to bring the sky in. Uh, here's their dog little J trick and this is like a uh, it's like a greenhouse we're in front of here and using that tilt shift so since they were kind of side lit I don't normally like side lit but I wanted to have that background I'm balancing it with um, using highlight soft and just kind of really delicately adjusting um, exposure and, and temperature, but it turned out really nice. So in this image, I'm going to bring the sky back in again with a graduated neutral density filter. And the graduated neutral density filter, all it is is just a kind of a mask that you pull in from any direction that starts out dark and then goes to clear and it comes from an actual thing that actually exists called a, new, a graduated neutral density filter which is a piece of glass that fits in a in a filter holder in front of your lens and a lot of um, landscape photographers use them to bring the sky back in in a dramatic landscape and you have the same tool in Lightroom and it's a really fast way to kind of preserve a sky so she was so bright on one side that I just was like, let's just do black and white. And it, and it looked really nice. Again, this is uh, side lit. It's not my ideal lighting situation, but it was the only way to get her against this nice background. And so I am now kind of dodging and burning, you know, along the side of her to get it to look right. A little more dodging and burning. Nothing too serious here. I love that uh, thermometer by the door. I don't know what it is. The thermometer and the fan and that little billboard piece of paper thing is cool. Doing pan up on this one just to see how it looks. Looks pretty good. Eric looks pretty sharp in a suit. Uh, I love the uh, depth in this, so I'm gonna just play with this a little bit in black and white. The flowers are way too dark, though, so I'm, you're gonna see, again, my incredible attempts at dodging and burning here. Um, I usually start off with a pretty, pretty harsh uh, setting on it so that I can really see what I'm doing, and then I hold down Option and Erase areas where I've kind of spilled over where I wanted to, to brighten. But again, I mean, I spent like, you know, seven seconds on that photo. Now I'm going to do a little bit of black and white with Pen F, and I'm going to be using the um, graduated neutral density filters a lot throughout this section to bring that sky back in because it's so bright. So you just 
drop it over there, um, set it to a negative amount, and you can start bringing the sky back. And I'm also going to use it in this photo because it could have a really cool sky if you could see it. And this one's pretty extreme. It's almost negative three for exposure, but it works. It looks really nice. Doing a little bit of dodging and burning. Cranking it way up so I can see where it is and then, and then dialing it down until it looks right. This image, 400H, a little bit of J-Trick, and then I'm going to drop the exposure and I'm going to grab the neutral density filter, pull it down in the sky, crank down the exposure, and bring that sky back in. Super simple. Anyone can do it. Um, 400H, increase the exposure, fix the temperature and tint. This image is really flared out with the backlight there, so I'm going to bring in the black point on the tone curve and then apply it to the next image. Uh, it looks like I need to bring the exposure down a little bit for this second one. There you go. And yeah, that looks perfect. Um, Got to bring that sky back in. So let me grab the neutral density filter. Okay, 400H neutral fix the temperature, bring in that black point on the tone curve, fix the tint, repeat. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to mention about tint is I think that's where a lot, a lot of people have trouble. Um, a lot of people can see if an image is too dark or uh, too warm or too cool, but really good skin tone, that lives inside the tint slider. So don't be afraid to touch it. And using the, the tint slider and the temperature slider, I mean, that, that just comes from practice. Um, the more you edit, the more you really focus on skin tones, the better you'll get at it. But there's no magic bullet. There's no preset out there that will give you perfect skin tones unless it's completely covering up the image, like an Instagram filter where you can't even see what the hell's underneath. Um, but if you want a nice clean edit, you just have to learn how to see skin tone and how to use the temperature and tint sliders. This is what makes you a professional that people pay for. Um, if you are unable to see color really well, and that's totally okay, some of the best photographers I know are even colorblind, you need to outsource that to someone who can edit it for you. Um, because at the end of the day, you're not going to get anywhere in your career unless you can do this kind of stuff. And you're not going to get far. You'll get to like a medium level, but not super far. So it's really worth practicing temperature and tint adjustments until you can get beautiful skin. Skin is the most important part. If you get the skin right, then everything else in the image will fall into place. Uh, human beings can see when skin doesn't look right in like half a second. Um, we're not so picky when it comes to other objects not being exactly the right color. But humans kind of base our perception of color off of how skin should look, so focus on it. Okay, just doing some basic edits here. Just trying to make the photo nice and even. I love these shots in the field. The sky is kind of bright behind them, but I wanted to get them in the shade so that their skin would look good. Again, it goes back to skin. So I'm gonna crop in, you know, straighten it, and then I'm gonna bring in the sky on this next one. Um, I copied the previous edit way too bright, so I've gotta kind of correct that. Take me a second here, there we go. And then, see I'm doing the tint slider to get the skin tones right. This one I'm gonna try black and white on. And I'm gonna bring in the sky, kind of even that out a little bit. Uh, I love this image so much that I edited it 
it in color and black and white. So sometimes, sometimes I do that because I don't know, I just thought the image was so nice. And here is a vertical in case I need it for their album. So it's great to shoot a vertical and a horizontal if you feel it's like really a hero image because you might need, you might need a horizontal. You never know. So now we're at my favorite photos of the day, which are in this field with these purple flowers. Um, I put the sun behind them as much as possible to get kind of a nice backlit look and then just had them kind of walk through the field a few times. So the funny thing about this is that we are in an onion field. Those are onion flowers. Um, that field, I, I just imagine the smell of onions times like nine million and that is the smell of this part of the day, but it was so beautiful and so perfect out there um, that it was worth it. Again, that red that you just saw in the sky, that was because I had the J, the J key pressed, and that just shows you where things are turning completely white or completely black. So I alternate between having that off and on all the time. I'm just kind of copying and pasting edits here. Here are these nefarious onion flowers. Green onions, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably saying it wrong here, but they smell like onions. All right, so now we're on to a completely different part of the day. This is indoors reception. We're gonna get to the real crappy lighting here in a minute. Um, and I like bad lighting because it's a challenge and I'm gonna be able to show you here in a second what you can do with Maston Labs in challenging light. Um, I, I rarely use a flash, I like to shoot ambient. So in, indoors, I'm just using a really fast lens when possible um, and higher ISOs. And then I'm just getting the perfect edit in Lightroom. So adjusting temperature, et cetera. So, all right, here we go. Um, okay, black and white, a few black and whites, those are easy. And then I promise I'll switch to color. Okay, here we go, 400H. 400H on this one too. We drop the exposure, drop the temperature just a tiny bit. 400H again, increase the exposure. And I'm just copying and pasting. I try to get a nice mix of details and scene setters like this one and then reactions, like what people are doing, and then kind of the basics, you know, like people giving speeches and all that. Uh, shooting pictures of people eating is hard because they often look really bad, but sometimes you can sneak one in. Details, so Fuji 400H neutral, drop the uh, temperature a bit, looks pretty good. You would not be able to get this look with actual film in the same condition. So this is where a hybrid approach really excels. You can keep that film look all day, even in indoor lighting and bad lighting. Here are the hop fields. Just kind of stepped out for a second to get these as kind of a scene setter. A little bit of a J trick. Um, so now it's pretty late and the contrast here is really, really strong, but I wanted to get just something out in the field. So Fuji 400H, increase the exposure, increase the temperature. Uh, and I'm comfortable with the sky being completely blown out. That happens a lot with film. I mean, it's not completely blown out, but it's totally okay. You don't need detail in every single part of the image. Um, that it, in itself does not make a good image. A good image is a good image. So. In a few of those images, yeah, we don't have sky, but it's okay. So, yeah, just some more details. Just kind of syncing things up as I go. Yeah, all these little things are important, not only for uh, getting published, because you, you do need a lot of details to get published, 
But, I mean, really, if you think about it, people normally, hopefully, get married only one time. Um, And all these little things that they spend a lot of time on, all these little details are meaningful to them. And it's really important that you seek those out and capture them. Because, you know, after that day is over, they're gone. You don't see those details ever again. And, I don't know, they're important. People are the most important, obviously, but details are important too. Uh, This guy was a little bit blurry, so I made him black and white. He was singing at the wedding. I'm going to clone out this, like, little music note thing because it's really distracting. Now we're on to the speeches. So I'm going to do Fuji 400H drop the ex- the uh, temperature and as you get to worse light and higher ISO um, it gets a little bit harder to correct for skin tone but you still can the trick is to not be afraid to drop that temperature slider way down but also to be able to realize when it's too far down you don't want an image that looks like super cold either but you can get some pretty nice looks with mass and labs in bad light. And I'm very proud of that. So we're just kind of cruising through these. Um, I applied Fuji 400H to most of these. So I'm just kind of looking for images where I need to, um, you know, drop the exposure a little bit like this one. Yeah, this one definitely needs a drop. So now I'm at, now I'm at ISO 2000, and you're going to start seeing the color getting kind of muddy. And that's just what happens when you get to higher ISO. You have just less color information to work with, uh, so corrections become more difficult. So some of these images I'm going to start just doing in black and white. Here are some just kind of things happening during the reception. You gotta keep yourself busy uh, until the dancing starts. So now we're on to the dancing part. And again, I'm gonna be, you know, adjusting the temperature. Um, I'm actually using graduated neutral density inside to kind of balance out that tent top. It's a little bit bright. Okay, almost done everybody. Thank you for watching so far. We're in the home stretch. Um, you know, this is, we've only been doing this now for an hour and 11 minutes, but I remember editing weddings where I felt nauseous because I had spent so many hours editing. Um, it really was something that in the beginning was really fun, and then 15 years in, it wasn't so fun anymore. And being able to go quickly through a wedding and edit it and have it look nice is critical. It's the only way you can stay in your career. So these are all Delta 3200. Um, I'm just kind of switching back to this because it was my favorite like low light black and white film. It's got a ton of grain, uh, but it's just beautiful. It's just timeless. This one I'm going to do color. And then I'm going to apply it to the next like 20 images. See how it goes. All right, did not go perfectly. That's all right. I'm going to drop the temperature down. We are now in the type of lighting that is just difficult to edit in period but with small adjustments to temperature and tint, you can get a pretty good look. So 
So this is an example of where it's almost too cool. So I warmed it up a little bit, dropped the temperature too far down. Too much negative space, so I'm gonna drop that down too with a little bit of a crop. And I turned it to Delta 3200. Drop the exposure here a little bit. Really nice scene. I love this one. I love it. Father daughter dance and Eric is looking on and they've got the band playing. It's really, really nice. I'm looking for uh, reactions all the time, things that are happening, things that tell a story. This is the mother-son dance, which is really fun too. I do pan up on this one. And I'm, I'm kind of always circling the room looking for layers. So this one's got, you know, a, a front layer, a middle layer, and a back layer. And I'm trying to position everything to where every part is interesting. So even where they're standing, where the curtain isn't going through their head, um, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to make it interesting in an environment that is, you know, chaotic at points. So they set up this slideshow outside. It was really cool, beautiful. Um, but there's no light at all. So I'm shooting at 12,800 ISO with a Canon 5D Mark II. And this is kind of pushing the maximum limits of this camera. Uh, so these images are going to look pretty grainy. Uh, I turned a lot of them black and white, and that, that really helps. And I could, you know, if I wanted to, some of these last photos, like really dive into the uh, noise reduction and, you know, clean them up even more. But... I mean, this, this one was at, yeah, 12,800 ISO with, and I think it was already, you know, it was already kind of bad light, so I'm just doing the best I can with these last few images. Um, they look all right in black and white, though. Now I'm back inside with the cake, getting some more details before the wedding is over. looking for, you know, whatever I can that's interesting. And now it's probably, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, maybe later, kind of towards the end of the night, and it's almost time for cake cutting. So I'm just grabbing some shots while uh, people are mingling and getting ready for that. You gotta stay busy as a wedding photographer, it's really important. Um, just so you stay alert and keep getting good stuff. So here they go for the uh, cake cutting. This is all um, natural light, so I'm, you know, I've, I've adjusted a few images. I just save myself time, I apply them to the next like 30, so I've got a good starting point while I work on these cake photos. So while I'm doing this, Lightroom is rendering those edits on the other images. I love this photo. I just love it. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Something about the hands coming in from the side with that old-fashioned like cake-cutting knife. This just makes me want to eat cake. Cake is like the best food. Okay. More people. I love I love crazy dancing photos, especially when there's like kids and I don't know people with babies, and I just love it. Kids know how to have fun. They're not self-conscious. They haven't been beaten down by the world like us adults. Not yet. So they know how to have fun. They had these really cool like uh, Persian rugs everywhere inside to dance on. It was so awesome. So I'm just alternating between, uh, you know, 
Pan F, uh, a little bit of um, Delta 3200, I think, and a few of these, and then Fuji 400H. Here are some guests at the wedding. People just having a good time. I'm always looking for that kind of peak moment. Something's happening. And every photographer's got their thing. So for me, my, my thing is capturing really clean portraits and details and little moments between people. Um, my thing is not, unlike some other photographers, my thing is not like really great partying pictures. I'm not good at that. Um, or it's just not what I care about as much. So, you know, it's not my strong suit, I guess. But the rest of the day, the quieter moments I love. And that's what I focus on. But it's important to figure out what you're good at and what you're not good at and try to spend the most time you can on what you're good at. So these images are all at 5,000 ISO around a campfire. Um, kind of tricky to catch, uh, you know, or, or to get a good, good photo, because um, you've got you're working with crazy light already. But you know, you just do the best you can. You're just trying to capture the mood. And I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm just kind of switching between black and white color, seeing like which is least crappy. Um, okay, now I'm back inside. A little more light. Uh, we're going to do black and white on this one. Just simple exposure adjustments. I'm going to sync ahead a few photos so that Lightroom's doing the work while I, you know, see if there's anything that needs to be fixed. So um, on this image, I thought it would look really cool to kind of isolate the person who caught the flower. So I'm gonna just take a brush and just kind of make a big circle around her and start to darken the area around her just to draw attention to her catching the flowers. And since the Dodge and Burn will be about the same, I applied it to the next photo. Uh, this photo I'm just starting over with just black and white, just some great moments. We got babies, friends. Okay, we're here. We here we go. Here's a sparkler entr or exit. Everyone's favorite and sometimes the most difficult thing to shoot. I've got kind of a basic color correction there. I'm going to apply it to the next like four or five images, but I'm probably going to have to fix a lot of them. And I'm going to do a few in black and white and a few in color. Yeah, that looks great in black and white. All right, here we go. Coming through. And as I'm shooting, I realize all of a sudden that I am joined by a few other people with cameras and one of their flashes goes off at exactly the right time, which was great. So there's my one flash picture. And they get in a really cool sports car driven by their friend and they are off. And everybody is cheering them on and it was just an amazing night. So I hope you enjoyed that edit. That is how I do it. You can learn it too.